Welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, please click the subscribe and bell buttons to be notified when new videos are uploaded. And like, comment, and also share the videos with your friends and family. Then, over a period of about 200,000 years, conditions for reef formation became ideal. Prolific coral growth took place in relatively shallow waters that surrounded ancestral areas. Around 500,000 years ago, a massive tectonic push lifted the entire island along with the submerged coral reef terrace. The result was that this terrace was now entirely above sea level and became the first and upper coral terrace. Another outcome of this tectonic uplift was that an abundant fresh coral growth began in the new shallow waters created around the west and South coasts. At about the same time, erosion started to take place on the east coast, exposing the intriguing folds of the oceanic sediments that remain to this day. The sheer rock face of the middle of the step was also formed during this period. Further geological developments were that the heavy tropical rains started to carve gullies and erode subterranean caves. Over to your right, you have the stream, and then this vertical, this stream will not be due to the surface. This water, let me explain what's happening. So as the water sticks through the surface, it eventually makes it to the limestone, and it gradually goes to the limestone, it will cut the path, starting as a narrow passage, then bundling, so eventually creating a passage or stream. So then with the vertical of this stream, will probably lead you to a higher end. I'm going to let you use your imagination for that one. Above that ladder, there is a passage. 
If we were to follow that passage, it would lead us to the original entrance of Harrison's cave, and that is the passage our two explorers would have used as they entered and exited the cave. It took them five and a half to six hours to make their way from the original entrance to the point above the ladder. When they got to that point above the ladder, you can imagine what they had to do next. They went swimming. The explorer's pool is about nine feet deep in the center. And after leaving the explorer's pool, remember all of it would have been solid rock, and our explorers would have only had this passage to your right to continue on with their journey. And I just wanted to get a quick look underneath, just to see how narrow this passage may get. Then by a show of hands, is anyone on board going to go to this passage? Anyone in the back? No one? I mean, someone told you that that is ready? If you have that ready or any, you want to get rid of someone on the floor, you just tell them what's there and it's open. It's not even just off. I welcome everyone to the twin ball. Now, who said Barbados does not have any waterfalls? We've got two right here. So the waterfall on your right, this water is coming from the explorer's pool where we just passed. The waterfall on the left, this water is coming from the Rotanda by the village. You know the two streams meet, they combine and make their way down. Before the end of the tour, you will see where that water leaves the cave. So guys, after the explorers left the explorer's pool, they would have ended up above the passage to the right. When they got there and they saw that second stream, they became really, really excited because in a cave where two streams meet, the fact that I changed it, that central line set for the way to down the great hall, the lower level. This chamber is 100 feet high and 150 feet wide. In the past, it was, it was once flooded with water, but it was our formation of stalactites as well as stalactites. They could not have formed. They only became possible once the land rose in relation to the sea level. And guys, if you look above me, you'll find a lone formation that appears to be wearing a top hat and a cloak. To the back, we have two larger formations that look like organ pipes, and for that reason, we often call this area the cathedral. However, after not having a year and a half of popover or any sort of party, when I look up here, what I'm seeing is a fact, a party. We got the bartenders at the back. We got people here dancing. Of course, you know, this is Kaduma weekend. So you understand how we're working with. And of course, up here we have our performer. Can you guess who I'm thinking about? You're supposed to start singing at this point then. What's this song? <laughs> We can either sing under cloud, under a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. But of course, if you sing it so far, I've got to sing that it looks like a female rag. Bruce Lee Almighty. And guys, remember, we are now about to enter our natural passageway, so remember to keep your hands where they set your head inside the ground. We can tell the difference between the natural and the man-made passages because the natural passages are more rounded or circular, while the man-made is more square or rectangular. And if you take a look over to the sides of the walls, you will see a white deposit. To some of you, it may look, to look like ice, but of course, to the children, they may be seeing some form of ice cream, snow cone, slushy, something very edible and sweet, you know, just to taste the tongue. But please remember, do not touch it and do not bite it. This substance is calcite. It is as hard as rock and you probably will break a tooth. And it has no taste. Literally taste it wrong. Sorry. And ladies and gentlemen, just take a look at what this guy is doing right now. This is our driver, and he's going to take a drink. He is drinking the water actually coming from the ceiling. So the water falling on you is actually quite harmless. As I said, it is nice and filtered, so you can drink it. This 
look at him. How old does he look like? And he's still here doing tours. He looks like a hundred. But he's moving like he's fifty. So just remember. Yo. 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 So guys, it has to be nice. Let's start high breath. If you're left in here, it's going to be my fault. Don't worry about it. I can get it all off though. If I try really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's your left. We have the flow stone wall. So just remember that not to touch the formations. I can see everything from where I'm sitting. So yes, you are in the green helmet. I can see you. Yes, I'm going to wave at you. I can see you. <laughs> so this feature of the flow stone is only about 40 years old. Remember, 40 years ago when we first came in to do a little bit of excavation, we had to remove some of the sides just so we could facilitate the trial. Look at that formation after 40 years, three to five inches thick in some of the areas. And above me, we have our drapery. We call this one the drapery because it looks like the fold on a tablecloth. So ladies and gentlemen, if you are or if you're willing to touch a formation, this is the one you can touch. Let me go to touch it. And guys, I just want to use your imagination one final time and tell me what you see when you look into this area. What do these formations look like? What do they remind you of? They look like. So what's that, an igloo? Penguin. Penguin. If you are a couple, it should look very familiar. If you are married, it should look very familiar. No, the altar says the chapel of the church. Yes, by the chapel of our church, yes. We, we call it the altar because we see a man on his knees proposing to his girlfriend. And we've even had persons step off the ground right here and propose to their loved ones. And of course, we've even had weddings inside the cave. Remember the whole thunder where we did the circle? That's a lovely thing for having your wedding. So of course, if you are thinking about getting married, having a wedding, proposing, you just come back to the cave and let us know. We will hook you guys up. And I just want you guys to get a quick look over to your left. This is a natural passageway. However, this tunnel is a man-made tunnel. There is a reason we made this tunnel. Can anyone guess what? It would be interesting you said that. Very interesting you said that. I'm going to let you know when we get to the other side. <laughs> but before that, ladies and gentlemen, I want to try a little experiment with you. Can you please turn off your camera? Yeah, turn off your cameras and lock your phone screen. If you have, bats. you wait real late to ask me about bats. No, I have a question. That, that, that was a question you threw on the surface, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got you. Don't worry, there are no bats inside the cave where we are. All of them are at the original entrance. However, if it was up to me, I would take down the net, let the bats fly inside, and they fly over your head and you scream, then I would laugh. <laughs> so right over to your left, that is the mirror lake. So go ahead and take your photos. If you're taking your photos, turn the flash off for best results. Is it not a beautiful sight? The way there's just a blue cast on the bottom, then we have the tiny droplets of water rippling on the surface. Doesn't it make you want to take your shoes off and go run it inside? Right? Yes, of course, but that will be the end of you. <laughs> Let me explain. Below that seemingly harmless two feet of water is about six to eight feet of silt that acts exactly like quicksands, which means if you go running across, you're going to go down just as fast. And we estimate it will take about six persons to pull you out, 